तरह से निवेदन है कि वो इस कार्यक्रम के संचालनार्थ मुझे अनुमति प्रदान करें अनुमति है मंगल सया पितर प्रयो स्वाभ्या मृगाक्ष बल स्वाभ्या कैलाश का शिव स्वच्छा भोजगत नवेन्दु मुकुटा त्रिनेदे त्रिनेदे चंद्रोत्थासित मूर्धज सुरपति दधत्तु दिव्य ममल हा पंके सूरेन्द्विलोचन करतल पाशाक्षसूत्रुषा क्षय पशुपति मृत्युंजय संहरे मृत्युंजय संहरे इस मंगलाचरण के उपरांत प्रोफेसर की झा जी से मेरा निवेदन है कि वो उपस्थित सभी विद्वानों का परिचय प्रदान करें प्रोफेसर पीछा सुधीर जी आप सर हाँ मैं केवल एक वाक्य बोलना चाहता हूँ मैं आई वुड लाइक टू कंग्रेचुलेट प्रोफेसर झा एंड टीम एन एम एम फॉर ऑन ऑन द ओकेजन ऑफ द फाउंडेशन डे ऑफ नेशनल मिशन फॉर मैनुस्क्रिप्ट and we are very fortunate that we are hold, hosting this webinar uh, today uh, congratulations once again to you sir and uh, my sadar pranam to all the panelists uh, and i'm sure we will learn a lot uh, in about 2 hours from now thank you so much thank you sir ji नमस्ते मैं राष्ट्रीय पांडुलिपि मिशन एवं वैदिक हेरिटेज पोर्टल इंदिरा गांधी राष्ट्रीय कला केंद्र के संयुक्त तत्वावधान में आयोजित कही सुनी लिखी भारत की वैदिक एवं पांडुलिपि परंपराओं की कहानी तथा इनकी समसामयिक प्रासंगिकता विषयक वेबिनार के तृतीय सत्र में आप सभी का स्वागत करता हूं आज के वक्ताओं में प्रोफेसर मधु खन्ना प्रोफेसर ब्रज ब्रज किशोर स्वयं डॉक्टर टी गणेशन हैं और सभा की अध्यक्षता सदस्य सचिव डॉक्टर सचितानंद जोशी जी करेंगे जो यथाशीघ्र हमारे साथ होंगे भारतीय संस्कृति एवं ज्ञान परंपराओं परंपरा हजारों वर्ष प्राचीन है वेद भारतीय ज्ञान विज्ञान का आधार है हमारी सभ्यता संस्कृति कला विज्ञान इतिहास की मूलभूत अवधारणा वेद मंत्रों में सन्निहित है जिसे वेदांगों और उपांगों के द्वारा समझा जा सकता है वेदों का अध्ययन वर्तमान में भी मौखिक परंपरा से हो रही है वेद की पाठ परंपरा संभवतः विश्व की प्राचीनतम एवं अटूट शिक्षा व्यवस्था है चार वेद छह वेदांग न्याय मीमांसा धर्मशास्त्र पुराण आयुर्वेद धनुर्वेद गांधर्व वेद एवं अर्थशास्त्र विद्या के कुल 18 प्रकार कहे गए हैं विद्या के इन्हीं 18 स्रोतों में निहित ज्ञान को जनमानस तक पहुंचाने के उद्देश्य से इंदिरा गांधी राष्ट्रीय कला केंद्र ने संस्कृत मंत्रालय भारत सरकार के तत्वावधान में वैदिक हेरिटेज पोर्टल परियोजना का शुभारंभ किया परियोजना के प्रथम चरण में वेद 
वेदांग एवं उपवेद से संबंधित जानकारी को संकलित करने के साथ साथ इन विषयों पर हो रहे शोध कार्यों की जानकारी इस पर इस परियोजना के माध्यम से पोर्टल पर उपलब्ध कराया गया है वैदिक वांगमय से संबंधित कोई भी जानकारी चाहे वह पाठ परंपरा से हो या पांडुलिपियों और प्रकाशित पुस्तकों से अथवा यज्ञ से संबंधित पात्र आदि का वर्णन हो वैदिक पोर्टल पर उपलब्ध होगा परियोजना के दूसरे चरण में पुराण न्याय मीमांसा आगम एवं धर्म शास्त्र में निहित ज्ञान को सम्मिलित करने का भी लक्ष्य है आईजीएनसीए भारतीय कलाओं पर शोध के लिए समर्पित एक प्रमुख संस्थान है केंद्र ने भारतीय कला के मौलिक ग्रंथों का अंग्रेजी अनुवाद के साथ कई महत्वपूर्ण संस्करणों का प्रकाशन किया है महत्वपूर्ण वैदिक ग्रंथों जैसे मात्रा लक्षण ब्राह्मण औधायन स्रोत सूत्र लाट्यायन स्रोत सूत्र पुष्प सूत्र ऋग्वेद की आसोलाइन संहिता तथा संख्यान शाखा के रुद्राध्याय के साथ साथ पुराण शिल्प संगीत नृत्य मूर्तिकला वास्तु आदि विषयों से संबंधित के ग्रंथों का प्रकाशन हो चुका है केंद्र ने वेदों की मौखिक परंपरा का प्रलेखन भी इंटेंजेबल कल्चरल हेरिटेज अमूर्त सांस्कृतिक विरासत परियोजना के अंतर्गत किया है वेदों के विभिन्न पहलुओं पर कई संस्थान पृथक रूप से और अनेक विद्वान व्यक्तिगत स्तर पर पहले से ही काम कर रहे हैं आवश्यकता है कि सभी संबंधित पक्षों को का एक नेटवर्क बनाया जाए जो रचनात्मक रूप से एक दूसरे के पूरक हों वैदिक हेरिटेज पोर्टल ऐसा ही एक मंच है जो वैदिक ज्ञान को विश्व स्तर पर लोगों तक पहुंचाने में सहायता करेगा साथ ही इस ज्ञान विज्ञान को सुरक्षित रखने के लिए हजारों वर्ष पुरानी हमारी लिखित परंपरा है जो एक दूसरे के पूरक है लिखित रूप में साहित्य का यह भंडार विभिन्न भारतीय भाषाओं एवं लिपियों में संरक्षित है जो कि भोजपत्र तालपत्र सूती वस्त्र शिल्प कागज जैसे पदार्थों पर अंकित है भारत के पास एक करोड़ से अधिक पांडुलिपियों के होने का अनुमान है जो शायद दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा संग्रह है जैसा कि आप सभी जानते हैं राष्ट्रीय पांडुलिपि मिशन की स्थापना संस्कृति मंत्रालय भारत सरकार द्वारा फरवरी 2003 में पांडुलिपियों के संरक्षण और भारत की विशाल पांडुलिपि संपदा में सन्निहित ज्ञान को अनावृत करने के उद्देश्य से की गई मिशन के प्रमुख उद्देश्यों में पांडुलिपियों का संरक्षण पांडुलिपियों का सूचीकरण पांडुलिपियों का प्रकाशन पांडुलिपि शास्त्र के अध्ययन में शोध को बढ़ावा देना एवं एक राष्ट्रीय पांडुलिपि पुस्तकालय की स्थापना करना है मिशन के प्रमुख उपलब्धियों में लगभग चौवालीस लाख पांडुलिपियों का सूचीकरण लगभग आठ करोड़ पन्नों का संरक्षण तीन लाख बीस हजार एक सौ तीन पुस्तकों का प्रकाशन और 350 से अधिक कार्यशालाओं का आयोजन किया जा चुका है विभिन्न भाषा लिप एवं विषयों में होने के कारण अभी तक हम कुछ ही पांडुलिपियों तक पहुंचे हैं इसके लिए जन जागरण की जरूरत है जीवन यापन से संबंधित शायद ही ऐसा कोई विषय हो जो हमारे पांडुलिपियों में नहीं है ये दोनों परंपराएं साथ चलती रही और हमारे लोक एवं शास्त्र को समृद्ध करती रही आज मिशन का अठारहवा स्थापना दिवस है गत वर्ष हम सभी के लिए चुनौतीपूर्ण रहा तथापि मिशन के द्वारा पैंतालीस हजार पांडुलिपियों का सूचीकरण लगभग बीस लाख पन्नों का संरक्षण साढ़े आठ लाख पृष्ठ पांडुलिपियों का डिजिटाइजेशन एक डिजिटल प्रदर्शनी मोडी लिपि पर कार्यशाला तीन पुस्तकों यथा सोम सिद्धांत दीवान गालिब और राइटिंग्स इन मिजो मैनस्क्रिप्ट का प्रकाशन मंगोलियाई कांजूर पांडुलिपि के 45 खंडों का प्रकाशन 10 तत्वबोध व्याख्यान और दो वेबिनार का आयोजन किया जा सका उसी श्रृंखला के तीसरे सत्र में आज हम सभी जुड़े हैं यह कार्य मिशन के अधिकारियों और कर्मचारियों के अथक परिश्रम और सदस्य सचिव डॉक्टर सचिदानंद जोशी जी के मार्गदर्शन और स्नेह से हो सका परंपराओं में निहित हमारे मूलभूत मानव मूल्यों को देश के विभिन्न संप्रदायों और पंथों ने अपने अपने दिनचर्या का भाग बना लिया इसी के कुछ अंश का दिग्दर्शन आज हम आप सभी 
वक्ताओं के माध्यम से करने जा रहे हैं आज के प्रथम वक्ता प्रोफेसर मधु खन्ना जी हैं भारतीय विद्या के प्रतिष्ठित आचार्य हैं तंत्र में इनकी गहरी पैठ है आप टैगोर नेशनल फेलो तथा सेंटर फॉर कंपेरेटिव रिलीजियन एंड सिविलाइजेशन जामिया मिलिया इस्लामिया में डायरेक्टर रही हैं आप इंदिरा गांधी राष्ट्रीय कला केंद्र के कलाकोश विभाग से जुड़ी रही प्रोफेसर ब्रज किशोर स्वयं श्री जगन्नाथ संस्कृत विश्वविद्यालय पुरी में धर्मशास्त्र के आचार्य हैं तथा समकालीन भारत में धर्मशास्त्र के प्रतिष्ठित विद्वानों में मूर्धन्य हैं उन्होंने सत्ताईस पुस्तकें अंग्रेजी संस्कृत ओडिया और हिंदी भाषाओं में लिखी है उनके 100 से अधिक शोध पत्र बारह से अधिक लोकप्रिय लेख प्रकाश हो चुके हैं उन्होंने तेरह छात्रों को शोध और तैतालीस को एम में गाइड किया है डॉक्टर टी गणेशन फ्रेंच इंस्टीट्यूट पांडिचेरी में सीनियर रिसर्चर हैं और फ्रेंच इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ पांडिचे पांडिचेरी द्वारा तीन खंडों में प्रकाशित सुक्षागम संपादकों में से एक हैं उस कर, उस का पहला खंड उमापति और ज्ञान प्रकाश ये दो और प्रकाशित व्याख्या के साथ उन्होंने उनके द्वारा पहली बार संपादित किया गया जो 2014 में राष्ट्रीय पांडुलिपि मिशन के द्वारा प्रकाशित किया गया उन्होंने सेविस और सेब सिद्धांत के बारे में 30 से अधिक शोध पत्र लिखे हैं संप्रति वे ए कंपेरेटिव हिस्ट्री ऑफ सेब सिद्धांत इन तमिलनाडु विषय परियोजना पर काम कर रहे हैं प्रोफेसर जोशी अभी जुड़े नहीं है प्रोफेसर जोशी देश के प्रमुख शिक्षाविद जन संचार शिक्षण के आधार स्तंभ लेखक नाट्यकर्मी प्रशासक के साथ साथ इंदिरा गांधी राष्ट्रीय कला केंद्र के सदस्य सचिव भारतीय संस्कृत के संपोषक और हम हम सभी के मार्गदर्शक हैं हम उत्सुकता पूर्वक आप सभी को सुनने की प्रतीक्षा कर रहे हैं मिशन के स्थापना दिवस पर आपने इस कार्यक्रम में अपनी सहभागिता स्वीकार की इसके लिए केंद्र और मिशन आप सभी का आभारी है और आपका स्वागत करता है आदरणीय प्रोफेसर झा आपका बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आपने अत्यंत सारगर्भित रूप में वेबिनार पांडुलिपि मिशन तथा वैदिक हेरिटेज पोर्टल के विषय में जानकारी दी तथा उपस्थित विद्युत मंडल का बहुत ही मनमोहक और आकर्षक परिचय हमारे सामने उपस्थित किया आपका फिर से धन्यवाद और इसी के साथ में हमारी आज की इस ऑनलाइन संगोष्ठी की प्रथम वक्ता विदुषी प्रोफेसर मधु कन्ना जी से निवेदन करता हूं कि वो अपने विषय पर अपने विचार हमारे सामने प्रस्तुत करें हमें आनंदित करें प्रोफेसर मधु कन्ना जी मैडम अपने को अनम्यूट कर ले प्लीज हाँ नमस्कार सुनाई दे रहा है आपको जी मैडम अच्छा मैं यही कहना चाहती थी कि मुझे इंग्लिश में बोलने की अनुमति दे आप सब सो आई वॉन्ट टू बिगिन बाई पे माई ग्रेट बेनिफिशियंस एंड थैंक्स टू रिस्पेक्टेड सदाचंद सदा सच सदानंद जोशी जी एज वेल एज हिस वंडरफुल टीम ऑफ प्रोफेसर झा एंड and uh, our dear uh, younger scholar sudhir ji for inviting me to this very very important um very very important subject which i think that we need to deliberate in modern india so i uh, i deep gratitude to the management um and to all those was in to give me this opportunity to say a few words about what i call the vedas ancient texts and modern context i took the subject because i've been teaching religious 
years. And every time one talks about uh, uh, you know, people can get social system why do we talk about leaders and um, I have always wanted to the Sanskrit literature the greatest resources that particular topics. Now, मैम आपके साउंड में कुछ प्रॉब्लम है सर उनके उनका कनेक्शन डिस्टर्ब है बैंडविथ इज लो हम्म ओके माइट बी डिस्कनेक्टेड आल्सो अरविंद जी हम वेट करें दो मिनट हाँ लगभग एक मिनट वेट कर लेते हैं या एक मिनट वेट कर लेते हैं मैडम कनेक्ट तो Uh, I think, ma'am, two IT is connected. Video start करना होगा. Okay. Ma'am, आप unmute unmute करने ma'am. Now the Rig Veda, ha, हो गया अच्छा ठीक है. Ah, the Vedas are four in number, as we all know, the Rig, Sam, Yajur, and lastly the Atharva Veda. The Rig Veda has as many as ten thousand five fifty two verses. The Sam has one thousand eight seventy five verses. The Yajur one thousand nine seventy five verses. And the Atharva Veda, five thousand nine eighty-seven verses. It's a huge corpus of literature. And now the Rig Veda resonates with praise hymns to deities of the sky, earth, and atmosphere: thunder, rain, sun, and wind. In contrast, the Atharva Veda rings a new note. It affirms the life of human in the world. The Atharva Veda is distinguished from the three Vedas primarily due to its contents. The Atharva Veda represents the popular side of Vedic culture. The Atharva Veda is a collection of almost 760 hymns containing over 5,000 stanzas, stanzas, and divided into 20 books. It is named after a fire-churning priest, Atharvan, and is full of incantations and spells attributed to him. And it is widely known as the Mool. Text for Ayurveda. Now, uh, the four Vedas, all these four which I've just named, are known as Shruti or scriptures that are of Parusheya or of divine origin. The authorless Sahitas are a form of revelation or revealed truth.
that the whole Vedic corpus is accepted as the most authoritative scriptural canon of the Hindus. Vedic Sanskrit was spoken, sung, and orally preserved in the chanting tradition that predates alphabetic writing. Each hymn or sukta is attributed to a rishi, male sage, or a rishika, or a female seeresses. The Vedic Sahitas were composed and transmitted verbally from one generation to the next for nearly two millenniums. The tradition of oral transmission involves several techniques of memorization and recitation governed by phonetic rules of euphonic combinations. A number of foolproof techniques of recitation were developed that were invariably cross-checked by each of them. The Vedas were committed to writing in manuscript form at a much later date. The knowledge enshrined in the Vedas was preserved by Vedic shakhas or theological schools. Now, what is interesting is that when we come to the later texts, like the Upanishads, we find that there is a change uh, in the content of, of this literature. Now, um, for instance, when we come to the uh, uh, Upanishads, there is a deep quest for the root underlying the phenomenal world. From exoteric ritual of the Vedas, we move to the esoteric contemplation of the Vedic seers, from polytheism of gods to inner unity of Brahman and Atman. And it is this great literature in the Upanishads that we find uh, one of our uh, great uh, 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 mottos, Satyamev Jayate, for instance, is taken from the Mundaka Upanishad. Upanishad also self restraint or dhamma, dan, daya, the karma doctrine. Then although the notion of sas, notion of moksha, the institution of householdership, I believe the thing is that constitute, and when we look at the Manu Smriti, for instance, he states that Vedo Akhilo Dharma Mulam, Vedas are the root or foundation of Hindu culture, Sarvagyan Mayohisa, because it contains all forms of systems, uh, or any form of knowledge system that we have today as a part of our culture is traceable form to the Vedas. And then the next thing which Manu enlightens us about is Paramam authority is Veda. It is Vedas on the apex of our literature, out of the Vedangas, Puranas, and Agamas have emerged. And India has had a very long history of, of Sanskrit literature, but Vedas are the root out of which all those great, uh, the great literature that we find today has sprung. Now, what is interesting is that we are all aware of any Vedic say. Most of the people in India don't know that these are really coming from uh, as I want to talk about uh, the ancient wisdom of the Veda and the and the modern context. Uh, these the Sanskrit tradition um, enshrined in the Vedas and Upanishads uh, is, I feel, to be one of the most legitimate sources of all forms of knowledge. I personally believe that it is a great source of human values in our ever-changing social 
seeing today, we go with it will depend upon how judiciously we decode, reinterpret, and reinvent a new language of expression to disseminate the pearls of wisdom that we find in the Vedas. So what I propose to do today, very briefly, is that I want to comment on three problems of human life that we are plagued with today. The first is the whole idea of cultural pluralism. Today, when we go to any of the conferences, you know, we find that everybody's talking about cultural pluralism, the conflicts between cultures, the conflicts between human relationships, whether they are at the family level or they are at the level of geopolitical level. And I think it's important to, to investigate as to what was the Vedic answer to the problem of multiculturalism or to the problem of environmental degradation or to the problem of health and well-being? So my concern today is really to comment on these three aspects and how, what are the Vedic answers? And if we find that the Vedic answers are very much in tune with what the modern intellectuals and policymakers are talking about, then I think we have to begin to revere the Vedas again. Now, India, as we all know, stands unique as one of the most culturally diverse nations in the world. The extent and scale of our biological, linguistic and cultural, cultural uh, range of ethnic diversity is tremendous. There are as many as 3,000 communities, 10,000 endogamous groups, and linguistically a heterogeneous region with over 300 languages. Diversity is like nowhere else in the world. Indian civilization has had a pluralistic character from the dawn of history. The prehistoric skeletal remains from rock shelter sites in Mirzapur dated at 15,000 BC. And the presence of India had begun in the very formation of East to four major streams of tradition that have converged to form Hinduism. The tradition of the numerous and primal communities who are the inhabitants historically traced to half a million years ago. And there are influences from the Hindu civilization. Thirdly, the ancient Dravidian culture represented by Tamil. And lastly, religion or the and contact with has endured even today. Now social group in any part of the world can live in a vacuum. It is quite obvious that to meet the challenges of this for kind of pluralistic society in ancient times, strategies had to be evolved, norms had to be set to negotiate a peaceful coexistence of communities where each group, indigenous or foreign, retained its distinct identity while respecting the individual rights of the other. Now, some hymns in the Atharva Veda refer refer to the five human races, Pancha Janaha. Shayan, the well-known commentator of the Vedas, gives an inclusive reading of this verse to connote the four castes and the rest of the people attesting to firstly, the existence of mixed populations in India and secondly, the more peaceful coexistence of diverse the world have the diversities at a level in the philosophical of it. Each detailed description and communities 
discussed in the Mahabharat. And later, even uh, the work of Abul Fazil's Aine Akbari, the theory of founded by Jains, for instance, is designated the theory makes a statement. First, there is a many different perceptions of an object. Secondly, every, thirdly, there's an inbuilt coexistence of opposites. The multidimensional perception demands a moral category of ahimsa or non-injury to the other if the characteristic feature of multi-dimensionally multi is to be retained. Now, it is for this reason that in the Vedas we read uh, Mitrasya Chakshusha Samiksha Mahe, meaning may I see all beings as my friend. Because this idea of multiracialism and multiculturalism was very deeply ingrained in the DNA of Indian culture. And in order to meet the demands, we have so many sayings in the Vedas that talk about that there's no such thing as a concept into India. They our culture and ours is a very, very important element that Vedic wisdom has given us. Uh, that the planet belongs to all. Friendship and and solidarity of all beings who inhabit the earth. The Vedic injunction conveys that we must make peace with the other and bridge that divides us from them. The value of interpersonal between and among. Oh, the beautiful verse in the rising sun sheds the immortal splendor of his rays. Or and God around us before may I look upon all beings as a friend. So this is the insight. That when you talk about and what take on this. Now we know that. Uh, during the last, uh, I would say, decades, the ecosystems the world over have transformed rapidly uh, in almost the last 20th century, resulting in irreversible loss in the life, unpredictable outcomes, um, non non-year or abrupt ecological problems of environmental degradation are being looked at primarily from socio-political and economic perspective. And little attention has been paid to religious leaders and the answers provided by them. Now, I personally believe that today we need an entirely new paradigm where there is radical shift in concept. Temporary to a more mode of ecologically sustained uh, when we read the for instance we have most beautiful uh, sutta given to uh, which is part of our sacred text. Yes. Uh, now, most of the most of the verses of the music are vocations to Mother Earth, where Mother 
where the earth as a mother of humankind and as this is piece of literature it's not simply a sites and I would like to mention that is has enjoyed an undiminished respect disputed you know this upon as uh, one of the most important pieces in the down to the bottom all the people who read these words about the human link the link of the human with nature both passing and popular references have been made to the bhumi sukta of yatharva veda during the last decade several new translation texts have emerged where the 63 verses of the sukta have been treated as an intended work. Verses from the Bhumi Sukta have been quoted freely in several speeches and writings of, for instance, the late Prime Minister Srimati Indira Gandhi and by Dr. Karan Singh. And today uh, we find that international agencies, such as the United Nations, the World Wildlife Fund, are text. It the of ecologically sensitive and and one of the reasons is because all those them very briefly. The earth, according to the seers, the Vedic seers, is governed by an ethno-scientific principle of harmony. The entire earth, by virtue of its animation, is sustained by a harmonious cosmic principle. In the the law of cosmic order, the self-regulated law of harmony is the impersonal power of the we try to understand in our own terms, uh, I would like to say that every environment, the hills, desert or forest, the plant and animal species that constitute a biotic community, they all form an organism. It's the principle that binds together and there exists an intricate and extensive network of these links. In Vedic terminology, it is known as bandhu or bandhutva. If a single biotic link is damaged, it would destroy and weaken the whole ecological balance of the universe. So in other words, what this, this concept telling us is that there is no room to waste in nature's finely balanced economy. Whatever is used is recycled once again through seasonal flux. The fundamental in of the cyclic of the seasons is celebrated by the seer. As they say, night succeeding days, your summer, O oh earth, your splashing rains, your winter and frosty seasons yielding to spring may each all produce us uh, beneficence. Now the idea in the sutta the cycles are governed 
human nature as twin agent who reshape the environment. Live in a participatory universe which threads together humans and the active actions in nature in a causal chain. And the emerging the emerging image of the earth as an organism that is put forward by modern scientists and environmentalists is traceable to the oldest religious scripture of the world, the Vedas. That is why I consider that when you think of environmental issues, Vedas have given us an ecosophy and we have to take this ecosophy very, very seriously. Now I come to my third observation, which is health. Uh, and will be what the Vedas have to say about that. We've seen that the whole Vedic worldview uh, is uh, is very much linked uh, with it's a cosmocentric worldview, when, which speaks about the interrelationship of all life. The indigenous life sciences of India, which is Ayurveda, yoga, and other forms of life sciences, sciences linked with food culture, for instance. Uh, have their genesis in this whole cosmocentric vision. And if we don't understand this cosmocentric vision, we are not going to understand the great, the, the great knowledge that is enshrined uh, in, in the Vedas about these subjects. Now, uh, all these life sciences were shaped and grounded in the received knowledge of primal ecology. Birds, animals, and plant world acted as guides to shape human response to yoga, for instance. We read in the sources that Lord Shiva created different species by assuming their bodily postures. Certain yoga postures, for instance, yoga asanas, were directly derived from the plant and animal kingdom. So for example, we have the Simha Asana, the Vrisha Asana, the Kurma Asana, the Bhujanga Asana, uh, the uh, Hansa Asana, etc. Now, uh, why is it that these Asanas are named? Because they was, they, our sages were very much in tune with the wisdom and the biological aspects of, of these, uh, of, the, of, the, of the biotic world as a whole. Um, now, in another instance, for instance, we have the, uh, the concept or the image of Hansa or the bird, the swan. Um, now, Hansa, as a metaphor, was taken to describe yogic awareness. The homeless free wanderer is known as uh, Hansa, like, you know, Paramhans. We use the word Paramhans. Why do we use the word, word Paramhans? Because Hansa is a bird 
which knows how to do, to discriminate between water and milk just so metaphorically when we say that here is a great yogi who is a paramans that means that yogi has attained that very high level of consciousness where he or she can discriminate between true from falsity so this was the metaphoric wisdom that we find now ecological consciousness that i've been talking about also was very much part of ayurveda ayurveda as we know is a holistic system in its conception approach and application it expounds a way of life in which the physical the psychic social moral aspects are integrated it is believed that our humoral nature is not isolated from the environment on the other hand an individual's actions moral and psychic level have a profound effect on surroundings in an environment dominated by greed violence and evil deeds medicinal plants lose their pharmacological properties hence the atharva veda celebrated the reverence often to the healing herbs and one of the most important documents for ayurveda uh, uh, is the atharva veda in fact atharva veda is is the veda that has all the basic knowledge of ayurvedic plants and medicinal herbs which are found in it and the prayoga aspect not only the shastric aspect but also the prayoga aspects so can we do can we talk of ayurveda today with, without the vedas certainly not so ayurveda atharva veda has the modern context because we we have come to realize that until we move into this whole dimension of integrated medicine we are not going to humanity is not going to be healed only by following the western model of care health care okay the next the ecological roots of india's materialistic culture and heritage concretized in art architecture and the craft traditions of india are not far to seek applied architecture created formula to accommodate the nature suffused cosmocentric view weaving a new found unity between man humans nature and the built environment and and it is this tradition prescribed and this we find in the prayoga text that the site on which the building must be raised must be located amidst trees groves watercourses and lakes myths narratives and hymns portray the human response to nature were active in the relationship of nature to the built environment architecture is sanctified in the embrace of nature it is a fundamental principle of traditional architecture that nature is not to be destroyed but controlled the built structure are meant to harmonize with the natural surroundings and the natural environment they must yield to environment with the same rhythm as trees and plants bursting with buds yield to the ever flowing force of gravity now this this is the mindset that veda gives us so we find that from notions of living harmoniously then moving on to the understanding of uh, ecological philosophy from there we moved on to the understanding of life sciences such as yoga and yoga as well as ethno sciences of ayurveda moving on to material culture all this is enshrined in vedic heritage of india and my concern is that you know we have to look at these sources and reinterpret them in a contemporary context and we'll only be able to do that if we read these texts with the commentaries and with with the great masters who can decode it now one of the essential qualities of this literature is that it is literature it is timeless and perennial it's not literature it's not literature all the cultures of the the every language not only uh, the vernaculars but uh, all the languages French and German and English etc and it's been translated into many languages it is also being commented upon 
and many people of their lives. Uh, what I have said in the end is that, you know, one of the ways in which Vedas can be de decoded is by mimetics. By looking at it, at it critically, maybe getting rid of some of the things which we don't need uh, to look too deeply, but at the same time, uh, preserving the knowledge and the wisdom of this culture, uh, which has come down uh, through the ages and which is really a collective knowledge of generations. It's not a knowledge given to us by one seer. When you read the Vedas, one of the things that comes through is collective wisdom. Each of the suktas is attributed to a rishi or a rishika. So, and they were collected to form the Sahita called the Vedas. Now, Madam, what is sad is that, Madam, please, you know, we have to, we Madam, have please, to reread these things. Conclude, Karde, please. Some uh, both. So my, thank you. Well, that's all I wanted to share with you. Uh, and thank you very much for inviting me to share some of my views and observations. And I'm really grateful to IGCA for putting together such this uh, discussion. Thank you. I can take Sorry, actually, we have two to I want to listen to my So, I will give my lecture here. madam. You have very आधुनिक परिपेक्ष्य में वेदों की उपयोगिता महत्व इन विषयों को जो है सभी हम सब के सामने रखा है इसके लिए बहुत-बहुत धन्यवाद बहुत हम लाभान्वित हुए आपके इस महत्वपूर्ण व्याख्यान से समय की कमी के कारण मुझे बीच में बोलना पड़ा इसके लिए मैं क्षमा प्रार्थी हूं और अब हमारे द्वितीय वक्ता हैं डॉक्टर टी गणेशन जी डॉक्टर टी गणेशन महोदय आपसे रिक्वेस्ट है आप कृपया अपना वक्तव्य रखें Namaste to all of you. And uh, shall I start? Shall I start my yeah, yeah. yeah, you can continue. Okay. So I first thank the uh, organizers, especially the NMM, uh, for inviting me and uh, giving me an opportunity to participate in this uh, uh, NMM launching day. In fact, I was uh, one of the co NMM coordinators, <laughs> the French Institute, for nearly 10 years, and uh, in the uh, from 2004 to 2013, and uh, I had the opportunity to uh, document because of the NMM. Uh, to document many thousands of manuscripts in Tamil Nadu, very interior parts, and uh, send them. Now, in this uh, lecture, uh, I present about the gen my entire uh, speech will be on the manuscripts of the French Institute and its uh, various subjects and its importance. And the, the 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 importance of the research projects based on those manuscripts. So just to give an idea of of course many many of you might know about the French Institute's collection, but still for other participants and others to get to get an, uh, give an idea of the our collection, I just present the first the Indology department's uh, collection. The French Institute is divided into three major departments, Indology, Social Science, and Ecology. So I am working in the Indology department as a senior researcher now. And the Indology department, uh, the French Institute started in 1955 and with the collection of manuscripts, the Indology department. And we have 8,000 uh, and odd palm leaf manuscripts. And it has been registered under the UNESCO Memory of the World Register as Shaiva manuscripts of Pondicherry because we have the largest collection of Shaiva manuscripts in the world where you can find every 
part of, of Shaiva literature, every aspect of Shaiva literature uh, presented in the manuscripts. So, apart from the uh, Shaiva text, we have also other um, texts in the other important subjects, which we can broadly divide, which is not exhaustive, of course, broadly divide as, as uh, apart from Shaiva Agama and uh, Agama related texts, Paddhatis, commentaries, and uh, yeah, quite a few Tamil translations of the Paddhati and others. We have texts on rituals, mantras. Uh, not many of them are huge literature, but many mantras and prayogas which were uh, in use, which are in use or which were in use even now. And such uh, many mantras and uh, with some texts have, do have some yantras also. Then we have the a good collection of Stala Mahatmyas, Puranas. Other than the uh, now, Purana, in the sense of the Ashtadasha Mahapurana, we have a good collection of Sala Mahatmyas, Sala Puranas, mostly related to many Shaiva holy places in uh, Tamil Nadu. Uh, so, many of them are still unpublished. And uh, the, then we have the Siddha medicine uh, manuscripts, many texts, nearly 400 texts, uh, more than 300 bundles. Uh, related to Siddha medicine in Tamil. Siddha medicine <coughs> is a, if we can say, approximate counterpart of the Ayurveda in Tamil Nadu, which is also very ancient and even now it is still followed and uh, taught. And uh, then we have manuscripts on Vedas, of course, and the Ramayana. Then we have a good collection of Tamil devotional literature, especially the Shaiva Siddhanta texts and the Tevaram such. Please, Dr. Ganeshan, please unmute. Sir, we unmute, hai, but I think the connection is good. Sorry, that was it. Am I audible now? Yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. The, when the French Institute was found, founded in the 1955, at that time there were uh, in Tirupati and other places, people were, there were research projects based on Pancharatra Agama and others. So with the, the research project on Shaiva Agama was not there. So the you know, so the, the 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 founding founders, especially the French um, scholar Jean Filioza, who, who was the founder of the French Institute, he it occurred to him that it was the Agamas. It is the Agamas, of course, even now, which is the basis of the religious philosophical aspects of common men, especially in South India. That too in Tamil Nadu, and uh, the and because of the thousands of uh, temples, stone structures uh, scattered in the South India and Tamil Nadu and Agama being the basic text followed. He thought of collecting the Agama manuscripts at one place and started editing the particular edition of those Agamas. So in, for that purpose, so every nook and corner of the South India, the scholars went and they have collected and purchased also some many Shaiva related manuscripts. In that way, we have a huge collection of which nearly 8,000 bundles. We have more than nearly 4,000 4, bundles might be related to exclusively Shaiva Agama related texts. So what, then what is the importance of the Shaiva Agamas? So I will, since for more than a millennium, both for one's personal religious practice, as well as for the construction of temples, 
for the various rituals such as installation of the shivalinga and other deities in the temple and worship festivals the shaiva agamas are followed to the fullest details from epigraphic records we know that the shaiva agamas along with the vedas were also taught in some colleges attached to well known shiva temples during the later part of the chola period especially in the 11th 12th centuries so such being the importance of the shaiva agamas only at the beginning of the 20th century some of the shaiva agamas were first published from chennai and then by uh, from the from chennai from two different press arakappa mudaliyar and shivagyana bodha yantra shalai press so these first publications were in the grantha script the script the grantha script is the script used for writing sanskrit in tamil nadu in fact grantha is a Uh, invention of the tamil tamil nadu especially during the pallava period so to write the inscriptions sanskrit inscriptions and the sanskrit texts in pamli grantha script was invented and this agashaiva agamas that were published in the beginning of the 20th century were also published in the grantha script so from the beginning years itself the french institute of pondicherry had started collecting the palm leaf manuscripts containing the shaiva agamas and their commentaries now these manuscripts are preserved in the our in our collection okay and the entire, just to give you extra information the entire collection of our manuscripts has been digitized and are available for consultation and free downloading through internet then the memory this collection what shaiva manuscripts of the pondicherry uh, become the unesco memory of the world then uh, as i uh, told in the beginning we have other such texts as sala mahatmyas and shaiva siddhanta texts and siddha manuscripts then the shaiva agama critical edition this manuscripts is fully uh, collection is being fully used to, for preparing the first time critical editions of many shaiva agamas of the french institute so far in the course of these 60 years uh, a dozen more than a dozen shaiva agamas have been critically edited and published in its series some of them run into more than uh, two volumes especially the sukshma agama which is now critically edited of which i am one of the editors may have the fourth volume and some agamas have uh, raurava ajita etc they had three or three volumes so these editions are testimony to international standards of research and taro through these editions and eventual publication the french institute is widely known in the world through the international research then what are the various research projects based on our collection first is apart from the critical edition of the shaiva agamas we have a descriptive catalog of our manuscripts another research project so the entire collection of the 8000 bundles containing more than 30 to 40000 texts of various size they are uh, cataloged in a detailed way giving every possible information about the author and commentator the the available the, 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 the extent of the text it's important the subject etc yes now Um, critical edition of the unpublished shaiva magamas by establishing the text on the basis of the available manuscripts accompanied by critical notes variant readings detailed introduction and summary this is the our mostly our standard of our shaiva agamas and uh, except it is also of course maybe uh, we have to do more uh, only except two agamas none of them have been translated into any other language other than sanskrit that is also neither indian nor any european language but raurava agama and ajita agama have been published trans- translated into english this much about the our uh, manuscript and uh, research projects then to give a an idea of the the the, the language the style of the shaiva agamas and uh, to the extent its content the language of the shaiva agamas is considered to be aisha that is spoken by isha namely shiva so aisha 
ಓಯ್ ದಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಪುರಾಣಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಇತಿಹಾಸ ಸಚ್ ಆಸ್ ದಿ ಮಹಾಭಾರತ ಆರ್ ಕನ್ಸಿಡರ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಆರ್ಷ ಸ್ಪೋಕನ್ ಬೈ ಋಷಿ so the special usages and peculiar words and forms that we meet with in the shaiva agamas is the usage of god as we can say so this point is to be borne in mind to comprehend the meaning of the words their usages and of the passages as well as for understanding undertaking critical editions so that is the very basic uh, understanding only on that basis only we can start editing because uh, the um, at some of the paninian rules and basic uh, sanskrit grammatical tradition are not followed to be frank especially this is the case with the agamas and tantra literature so we cannot always apply paninian rule or other grammatical uh, so what is the important is their content they want they the, the agamas convey the, the content and they use the, the language so uh, flexibly that is that is why we feel, we find many strange usages so to cite some peculiar usages of sanskrit verbal forms which may appear to be ungrammatical or unpaninian are found at many places in the shaiva agama corpus in the same way one may not find a clear correspondence regarding gender linga number vachana singular and plural in these texts the main reason behind such apparent incongruencies is that the authors and the redactors of this corpus were more concerned with conveying the actual meaning of the text rather than in the form of the words so i have we can you can cite some examples of this so in the we, we very often we find in the shaiva agamas the uh, uh, usages such as stupika for stupika and uh, strange uh, sandhis of two words two are combined where it is not strictly possible to have a sandhi so the words are combined like this we can find so many such examples i can cite tata upakumbham so tata upakumbham they in the agamas we find tatopakumbha so the tata is taken as a word ending in a so the following word upa a and u are joined we find so we have the usage tatopakumbha where actually the word is tata upakumbha so such usages then uh, we also find the local influence the local language influence also found in the uh, sanskrit uh, texts so the copies are prone to introduce tamil language specificities in the copy they are making especially as regards phonetics or idioms much against the standard sanskrit grammar and uh, all the agamas uh, are composed in the anushtup meter so in order to fit with the that eight syllable pada so they have merged the uh, we can say they can cut the words some letters and uh, like that but very the word ending in e long is sometimes very much shortened as very and uh, like that we have so many so the, the uh, generally apimasham masham kuriyat chando bhangam nakarayet so that is the one of the uh, <laughs> un um, return to usage so masha can be merged into masha in order to suit the anushtub meter for that so they have given so much freedom to use that language language and and similarly for samasas peculiar type of compounds or those things then gender the linga and vachana are many many times are not in correspondence so in the dhyana shlokas we find for devi dhyana shloka some in the same verse we find both pullinga napumsaka and sri linga words and the common usage is grihitva instead of grihitva grihya pujayitva pujya snapya and on the contrary we also have instead of nyasya we have nyastva so such a very strange usage usages 
So apart from the critical edition of the Shaiva Agamas, we have another project in which I am working, History of Shaiva Siddhanta. It is a major program under which I uh, since, uh, intend to, I have I also was pub have published one or two texts which are unpublished, which are very compulsory in Tamil Nadu and uh, uh, very important text was quoted in the various commentaries and uh, um, other texts, but not published. So, so I have published, critically edited them and I also have made a monograph on one of the important Shaiva Siddhanta teacher who lived in the 16th century in Tamil Nadu, who has composed enormous texts in Sanskrit as well as in Tamil, commentary and original texts. So he, I have collected all his, in our collection, all his works are available and I have made an analytical study of all the, uh, his works, Nigama Jnana Deshika and his teacher both, who lived in the 16th century. So that is the history, how he has, in that period, he has composed those texts to propagate to um, the Shaiva Siddhanta, the Shaivism, the both devotional aspect as well as philosophical aspect. I am also working on another Shaiva Acharya, Shivagra Yogi, which will be uh, published in the another volume. We have, in our collection, we have all his texts, only except one or two, many of them are unpublished. So both Shaiva Siddhanta, that is Shaiva Siddhanta is the system of Shaivism with philosophy as well as religion. For philosophy, it follows the ancient time, it followed the Dvaita system and in Tamil Nadu when it has spread for nearly a millennium, it has mostly adopted non-dualism, Advaita, but not Advaita of Shankara, <coughs> Advaita with modified one. So the philosophical aspects, it is a very uh, living uh, uh, religious philosophy. At the same time, it has the, the Agamas all are belong to this Shaiva Siddhanta branch. It has all the four Padas, Jnana, Kriya, Yoga and Charya. So the Shaiva Siddhanta philosophy comes under the Jnana, Vidya Pada aspect. And I am, uh, so these are the uh, descriptive catalog, critical edition of the Shaiva Agamas and history of Shaiva Siddhanta are three major research projects based on our uh, manuscripts collection. Then apart from the palm leaf manuscripts, we have a, a few, nearly 300 paper manuscripts. They were collected uh, they were written on paper and uh, the, though the copies were not so very old, most of them copied in the late 18th or 19th century, some even beginning of the 20th century, we have a paper uh, manuscripts also. Then we have a good number of paper transcripts. This is different from the paper manuscript. So the paper transcripts, we have 1100 bundles of long size uh, paper where the uh, the texts mostly Shaiva Agama Agama related texts uh, were copied from other manuscripts collection, especially from Tamil Chennai Oriental Library, Arya Library, and Tanjavur, and a few from uh, Banaras Hindu University Library also from Tirupati also. So in order to uh, these trans paper transcripts were utilized for also when the critical edition of the Shaiva Agamas and they have also been completely digitized and available in the internet uh, for uh, see, uh, research and free downloading. And uh, these all the paper transcripts were in Devanagari script uh, completely uh, so that even modern scholars who are not familiar with the Grantha script can also use them. Then, then, 
now i will go to the uh, now i speak about the about the manuscript as taught as presented in the aga shaiva agamas and other uh, non agamic shaiva texts especially shiva dharmotara shiva dharma etc so the, the in fact as far as i have uh, seen i have read only in the shaiva agamas we find uh, yeah, yeah quite uh, some important materials about the manuscript how a manuscript is to be prepared how it should be copied and in the context of uh, the especially in the context of copying the shaiva agamas and um, installing them as as a object of worship and uh, to uh, teach uh, teach the agamas to donate those manuscripts copied manuscript to orthi shaiva scholars so in that we have do uh, the shaiva agamas especially you you three or four shaiva agamas treat this subject very interesting and uh, i just will present a few of them preservation and propagation of knowledge as explained in the shaiva agamas first writing and the preservation of manuscripts a few of the shaiva agamas treat the subject of preparing the palm leaves for writing they give us details about the size of the leaves the method of writing and above all installing the written leaves that are made into a bundle pustakam for daily worship though worship of goddess saraswati invoked in the bundle of books pustaka mandala on the saraswati puja day is an ancient practice observed even today daily worship of the scriptures is not enjoined either in the shruti or in the smriti text shruti especially vedas they are shruti so, so they are taught under through oral tradition so naturally there is no question of about manuscripts and the smriti and puranas also none but such an injunction to worship a pustakam a, a manuscript bundle is found in the shaiva agamas oral and written tradition this leads us to another important notion about the texts of authority shabda pramana in the bharatiya tradition the vedas are mainly preserved through unbroken oral tradition while the agamas are preserved by writing in pustakam so the agamas are always written texts then vidya dana in the second chapter of the ancient shaiva text called shiva dharmotara which is The, the original sanskrit text has not been published we have a very large number of manuscripts especially in nepal and in in our collection in south india in various scripts but it is a very important text on the shaiva uh, religious practice and the organization of shaiva religion so in the shiva dharmotara there is a detailed instructions for preparing the palm leaves to copy the shaiva agamas which are also called shiva gyana they are ceremonial worship in a grand manner and donating them to a worthy shiva yogi according to the text the highest sacrifice is a gnana yagyam and it is to be done with the help of the book similarly donating a book to a worthy shiva yogi is the highest source of happiness the text describes in detail the method of preparing the book So the text Shiva Dharma Tara says in the second chapter, "Yatha Amaranam Sarvesham Parama Parameshwara, Tatha Yiva Sarvade Sarvad Dhananam Vidya Dhanam Param Sprutam." Just as Shiva is the most supreme among all the gods, so also the donation of a book of Shiva Gyanam is the most supreme gift among all. Then Vidya Simhasana and the decoration. in that the shiva dharma tara goes further it says one is according to the text one is asked to prepare prepare a throne called the vidya simhasanam made of ivory on which one places the leaves to be returned and those leaves that are already returned decoration of the palm leaf bundle with gold and precious stones or even ivory along with attractive pictures drawn with animal skin on both sides with strong cords strong cards hema ratna chitam divyam athava danta shobitam vichitra chitra yuktam va bahir utkirna kampikam parshvayoho charma samyuktam 
Rasutram Nibandhayet. These are the instructions. Then, reading the text, return text. After making the Guru seated before Shiva in a purified place, one chapter is to be recited for the sake of peace to cows, Brahmins, kings, and for the welfare of the country. The recital should be of calm mind, expert in the specialities of book, possessing a sweet voice and a good poet, and histrionics and well-trained in reading books. Then, description of the writer, Lekhaka, his costumes, and the method of writing. First, he should write five verses. A detailed description of writing along with the size and the shape of the letters, etc. are given in the following verse. Chaturashrihi samaihi shringaihi nathistolaihi navakrishaihi Sampurna avayavaihi snigdhaihi nathi vikshipta samhataihi Matra anuswara samyoga hraswa dirghadi lakshitaihi Nandinagari kaihi varnaihi lekayeti shiva pustakam so how the letters the manuscript should be and uh, should be clear clean small and well formed not too big not too small so all those details and the hraswa dirgha etc are all clearly to be followed and indicated so here we find a uh, scrupulous details the scripts etc to be used in this uh, in this verse then, gift of different ingredients used for writing. Gifting various ingredients used for writing, such as the empty palm leaves, that is, uh, palm leaf uncopied, cards for tying the leaves in a bundle, ink pot, and the pen, as well as bed for the writer, brings forth great fruits. We may notice that how the copyist is taken care of by providing bed, etc., for his comfort. So one can give the cloth for wrapping the bundle, Pustaka Asarana. So this is the verse. F Patramatra Sutradhyam Mashi Bhajana Lekhinim Sharayantra Stanadhyangam Shaya Tadhakta Vetanam. So one can give salary for copying. So Shaya bed for the comfort of the writer. So all the details are given. Then, excuse me. Uh, yes. Sir, yes. Please, please conclude in few minutes. Few minutes. Okay. Thank you. So, in the one of the Shaiva, so far I, we have seen in the Shiva Dharmotara how the manuscript details how to be copied, etc., etc and uh, the, installing them. Then we have the Amshubad Agama, one of the 28 Shaiva Agamas, Mool Agamas. We have a separate section called Agama Pratishtha. So there we get a detailed description of different types of book, Pustaka. So the Pustaka is given separate name based on its structure and shape and size, the manuscript bundle. We also find their measurements and the corresponding names like Lakshmi, Bhadra, Shrikara, Nalinaka, Srinivasa are some of the names of the Pustaka. Then, uh, then Adi Devatas, Brahma, Vishnu, Rudra, Ishvara are Adi Devatas and Adi Shaktis, Vama, Jyeshtha, etc. Then Adi Rishis, Vishwamitra, Balmiki, Kashyapa, Angiras, etc. Then we also have the practical instructions about manuscripts in the Amshavad Agama. Instructions to prepare the leaves for writing, decorations at the edges, the drawings are also given. In the same way, the stylus to be used for, for writing is supposed to be in iron and of a particular length. In the Shiva Dharmotara, we saw mashi, ink and lekhani, pen. But in the Amshuma Dagama, we find the stylus. So, in the, the South, the, in the South India, South Indian context, the palm leaf, there is no mashi is used. Only the stylus is used and the letters are engraved. Then the rights concerning the installation of the Pustaka, where the Agama has been returned, beginning from the Mandapa Puja, etc., all the rituals are described. Then the another Shaiva Agama called Veera Agama, it also deals with the Pustaka manuscript bundle and it devotes many verses for the subject of writing the Agama on palm leaves, worshipping them and installing them for daily worship. Uh, yes, Veeragama 
so we find the ink part mushi and lekhani of course and the preservation and in order to preserve the manuscript two wooden planks are to to be added on both sides of the manuscript bundle then another agama santan agama it also speaks about the manuscript etc then we have the tantra asana the deep tagama another one of the 28 another agama, agamas we get instructions for making the seat of tantra tantra asana which is a long stick made of gold or silver or copper with proper measurements to conclude i will conclude with the shiva mahimna stava verse the asita giri samam syat kajjalam sindhu vatre sura tarubara shaakha lekhani patra murvi likhati yadi grihitva sharada sarvakalam tadapi tava gunanam isha bharam nayati so there in the shiva mahimna stava the one of the ancient shiva stava we find this uh, mention of shar even if sharada starts writing the the mahima of shiva with kalpataru as a as the lekhani and the mashi kajjalam as the sindhu and the, the white mountain as the sindhu patra she cannot exhaust the holy uh, the gunas of shiva divine gunas of shiva so we find that such a reference here with the poet conveys that the qualities of shiva are impossible to be enumerated even if sharada saraswati herself starts writing using the entire earth as the leaf urvi patra the branch of divine tree kalpa vriksha as the pen and using the dark mountain as the ink holding it in the vessel of ocean so the so much is the importance of the uh, writing preserving and uh, reading those texts in our ancient scriptures and i have had the opportunity to present these informations as found in the shaiva texts especially in the shaiva agamas so i think this uh, what i have presented suits the theme of the this seminar kahi suni likhit so and uh, i think i it was useful and uh, i thank you one and all for your patient hearing and uh, once again i thank the organizers for this wonderful opportunity thank you jai hind thank you thank you sir for very well this uh, and now i am requesting professor braj to explore swain ji professor braj प्रोफेसर स्वाइंटी हमारे साथ जुड़े हुए हैं आप पूर्व प्रचार्य हैं प्रचार्य रहे हैं श्री जगन्नाथ संस्कृत विश्वविद्यालय पुरी के आप संस्कृत के मूर्धन्य विद्वान हैं और धर्मशास्त्र पर आपका विशेष कार्य है गहरा अध्ययन